The biggest issue with these DIY Centique builds is the shielding. I'm going to avoid interference here at the top by using aluminum tape. Be sure if you do this to have some layer of protection between the PCB board for the LCD and the aluminum tape. As you can see, I used a layer on both the front and the back. Next, I need to shield the tablet digitizer from the controller boards. I'm not sure at this stage where I'm going to mount it, but most builds use the back of the tablet. So to keep the strong electromagnetic signal from bleeding from the LCD controller into the digitizer, I'll use another piece of plastic from the AOC monitor and some aluminum tape. Like I said, I'm really glad I broke that other monitor. <laughs> that sounds silly. And that's the end of the LCD strip and reassembly. I'll turn it all off, unplug it, and move it out of the way. Now I start taking apart the tablet. This part actually made me more nervous because I spent more money on the tablet uh, even used than I spent on the two monitors combined. Uh, turn the tablet over and unscrew the six screws. Here you can see the layers of the tablet. There's the back panel, then the controller board and USB jack shielding so the tablet doesn't take interference from anything below it. After that is a foam panel to hold the digitizer in place. Then the digitizer panel. This attaches over on the left to the controller board in the back and to the express key buttons and touch script. And then there's the top cover. Since I've already taken this tablet apart once in my previous attempt uh, with that other monitor, the adhesive is already removed. Also be very careful with the small ribbons connecting the express keys to the digitizer board. They're super thin. And with a little effort, the top comes off. This leaves the digitizer in full view. Since I unplugged it from the controller board, I needed to reconnect it here on the side. Here's where I needed to make some more decisions. A look at the underside of the top cover shows this grid of plastic support to keep the cover at a specified distance from the digitizer. If I need to put the monitor inside this case, I will have to cut this part. Another big concern is keeping everything straight. If I go with a different cover, I'll need to find a way to keep the digitizer from moving Previously, the top cover did that by the screw mounts. Also, I need to keep the monitor inside the active area on the digitizer shown by the white line. For now, let's do a test of the monitor on top of the digitizer board. So I had to flip it over and alight it to the active area and keep everything out of the way. Now plug everything in. Great, the monitor still works. Again, I should have put the gloves on before touching so close to the LCD. Better late than never. One more swipe with the cloth to be sure it's clean and I'll grab the stylus. And nothing. Oh no, what? What was, was it the shielding? Did I break something? Ah! Oh, I forgot to plug in the tablet to the USB hub. Okay, one more time. Ah, dust on the screen again. Okay, here we go. It's out of alignment, but it works. So calibrate using the system preference pane and adjust the position a little bit. And it's in perfect alignment. Great proof of concept. Now all I need to do is cover the screen and figure out how to stabilize this whole thing. Okay, I will clean it again. You really can't clean it too much. Any dust in there will either be annoying or ruin the screen. So I'm using some Duraplex that I got from Lowe's. It's a 0 0.080 inch clear plexiglass. After I placed it in alignment with the monitor, oh, that's about two mil, two millimeters. Um, I marked the edges with a five fine point pen then more testing to be sure it will work with this additional layer of material in the way and it works. 
So I'll go cut the plexiglass. I used this little plexiglass cutting knife. It was easy, just hold on to a straight edge on the plexiglass and make repeated passes in each direction to cut, then it just bends away. Then peel away both sides of the protecting film. Again, a good time to wear gloves to keep the plexiglass from getting any dirt or fingerprints. I still ended up cleaning both sides here just to be safe. Clean the monitor again, yes again, and place the plexiglass in place. And it still works. After breaking my first monitor and the few failed attempts at building a 15 inch version, I am ecstatic at this point. So I'm ready now to permanently or at least semi-permanently mount the plexiglass to the monitor using some double-sided tape. And do some actual testing with a real project. For the final setup, I need to clear up some space here. I'll need to fit up the top cover back on. So I need this ribbon and shielding to be cut back a little bit. I also added some more shielding here, just in case. I don't want to have any interference from this top LCD board to make the digitizer fail. And of course, more testing to be sure it's still working. Okay, so in order to stabilize this thing, I first made a plan for a temporary solution using some foam core board. I took it all apart again, traced the shape of the digitizer board, and cut the shape out of the foam core board. With the shape all cut out, I needed to cut out the monitor shape. In order to keep that in line with the digitizer board, I had to measure that first. Then place the monitor in that shape so it all properly placed before I cut out the monitor shape. Then I placed the foam core shape around the monitor Again, this wasn't a permanent fix, but just to hold it steady in the office until I have time to cut open the top cover. And as I looked at the top cover with the foam board to show the size of the monitor, I see an issue. The size doesn't match up the plastic grid. And as I flip it back over to see it in relation to the front, I can see the plastic sheet doesn't show through the whole monitor either. So here's the foam board that reflects the monitor that was cut out from the foam board. It doesn't line up too well with the top cover. My first plan for cutting this thing is to match the hole I cut to be only the part of the monitor that displays an image the part shown here within the metal frame. I need to draw on the hard plastic of the tablet, so I need to get this plastic sheet out of the way. Clean the thing again. All right, I will use the plastic sheet from the top cover to see the size in relation to the monitor. With it aligned to the monitor, I can mark the border of the monitor. Again, you can see the monitor is wider than this plastic sheet. I'll use a marker to mark on the corners or near the corners of the plastic sheet where the edge points of the viewable area on the screen are. Then I'll use an X-Acto knife to cut a small hole at each of those points. And now on the tablet's top cover, I'll transfer those marks to the cover so I know where to make the cut lines. I got a finer point marker to make smaller marks and lines. Alright, with all that planning stuff out of the way, I can get back to putting this thing together. 
Apparently I forgot to turn on the camera and show putting the foam core board back on the monitor, placing it all on the digitizer and place, and taping it around the board with aluminum tape. Now I'm going to flip it back over to figure out the alignment and placement of the controller board, the wires, and make sure everything gets secured up. Here I'm running the ribbon for the LED through the hole that used to be for a plastic clip on the top cover. I don't need the clip because the LCD board is too big and will get in the way. And this will keep the LCD ribbon from getting snapped or ripped out. It plugs right here into the board. Now I'm taping it in place. Now I'm using some aluminum tape to temporarily mount the controller and power inverter to the back of the tablet. And now I'm taping down the LCD input ribbon to the back of the tablet. And placing the monitor control strip with some double sided tape. Alright, here's the proof of life shot. Uh, I propped the tablet up on a stand from the original monitor. For the keys, I'm using my Bluetooth keyboard. Let's open up Photoshop and try to draw something with this. It was shortly after this that my MacBook Pro locked up because I ran out of memory to record the video because this project was eating up more than 100 gigabytes of storage space and on my laptop that's kind of a premium. So before editing the monitor strip and tablet rebuild was over three hours. So I've cut it down into these parts.